So a California sheriff, Lori Smith, has been indicted for only issuing concealed carry permits to those who bribe her. So let's talk about this. But real quick before I jump into this video, if you think the only thing you need to carry concealed is your right to keep and bear arms, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. I also want to give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is USCCA. Through your membership, you get training, education, and self-defense liability protection. So if you carry a firearm, I highly recommend you take a look into USCCA, and I'll put a link to them down in the details section. Also, I'll let you know that this content is powered by the Firearms Policy Coalition. So head on over to joinfpc.org to help support the Second Amendment cause. Thank you again, Firearms Policy Coalition, for supporting this channel. So like I said in the intro, the Santa Clara County Sheriff, Lori Smith, has been indicted for willful and corrupt misconduct involving the issuance of concealed carry permits. Most of the counts for indictment involve Lori Smith and her office accepting bribes in the exchange for someone being able to receive their CCW permit in the county. In California, the CCW permit is the only way by which ordinary citizens may legally carry firearms in public in California. Absent a CCW, it is a crime to carry either a loaded or an unloaded firearm in public, regardless of whether the weapon is concealed or openly carried. The state of California allows for a person to be issued a concealed carry permit if one, you are of good moral character, two, good cause exists for the issuance of license because you or a member of your family is in immediate danger, three, that you meet these certain residency requirements, and four, you have completed an acceptable course of firearms training that is mandated under the statutory language. The issue with this whole scheme is that the state of California does not obligate county officials or even city PDs to issue permits to those who apply for a permit. Instead, it is 100% up to the discretion of that county sheriff, of that PD office to issue those permits. Therefore, in the state of California, there are some areas where it's very easy to get a CCW permit. And then there are some areas in California where it's pretty much impossible to get a permit. For example, the area I live in is a really easy area to get a CCW permit. I can pretty much put down any type of good cause that I want, maybe even self-defense, and they would issue me a permit. However, some areas like up north or down in the LA areas, um, it can be pretty much impossible for the average person to get issued a permit. Instead, we know that it's pretty much only those VIP individuals, those elites in those more restrictive areas who get permits, but the average person cannot. Now here in Santa Clara, that's pretty much exactly what's happening. They have this pay to play scheme that is pretty much been set up from the top individual, Lori Smith and other individuals in the office where they are only issuing permits to those VIP individuals, those elites, and those who pretty much bribe them for those CCW permits. There are allegations that Lori Smith and her office issued CCW permits to Apple's private security team, and in exchange, her office received a bunch of iPads. Then there was allegations that she herself accepted things like a Sharks game suite, food, drinks, etc., and then issued that individual a permit to carry concealed because she received all these kind of gifts from him. It's also alleged that she accepted campaign donations for her re-election from individuals. And then when those individuals who actually contributed to her campaign applied for those CCW permits, she would say, yes, they're good to go, issue the permits to them because they donated to my campaign. So not only were various individuals in the office accepting bribes that were benefiting them generally, like the Apple kind of iPads, but also Lori Smith at the very head of this kind of office of she's the sheriff, she was directly receiving bribes and then was issuing CCW permits to those people who were paying her, giving her gifts, giving her donations, all of those things. Last year, the district attorney's office in Santa Clara secured criminal indictments against two high-ranking members of Smith's inner circle in the sheriff's office. They also secured criminal indictments against various security executives, prominent members of the community, and more individuals who were engaged in the CCW pay-to-play scandal. Three of those defendants have now pleaded guilty and are cooperating with the investigators on this Smith case. Two of the cases have been dismissed and five other defendants, including the sheriff's captain, James Jensen, and under sheriff Rick Sung, entered not guilty pleas earlier this year and their cases will be continuing to go on. But there are some other individuals who have now reached agreements with the DA's office, with the investigators, and are cooperating against Smith and some of these other individuals on this whole CCW pay to play scheme. Now, the counts for indictment she is currently facing include count one, abusing her discretion in granting CCW permits on the basis of whether a given applicant was a campaign donor, a member of the Sheriff's Advisory Board nonprofit organization, a prominent individual in the community or was associated with prominent individuals or corporations like Apple, 
or otherwise has a personal connection with Lori Smith, i.e. they classify all these individuals as VIPs. Count two, failing to make an investigation and termination of good cause on individual basis of those applicants for CCW licenses that were submitted by residents who were not VIPs. Count three, keeping non-VIP CCW applications pending indefinitely. Count four, illegally accepting sweet tickets, foods, drinks, and Sharks game tickets. Uh, count five, failing to report Sharks game gifts on financial documents. Count six, committing perjury by failing to disclose Shark game gifts, i.e., then lying about her accepting all those gifts. Not only did she receive them, but then she perjured herself by saying, no, I never accepted all those. Count seven, failing to cooperate with internal affairs investigations surrounding treatment of Andrew Hogan. So not only has Sheriff Smith and her office engaged in a pay to play scheme issuing to VIPs in the county, but also she and her office were actively preventing common people, just the average everyday person from getting a CCW permit. They did this by putting these applications on an indefinite hold and never processing them. So it's kind of this kind of double one-two punch that they were doing. They were actively preventing just the average person from getting these CCW permits. And then at the same time, receiving all of these bribes and payments to give them to these so-called VIPs. Now, earlier this year, county supervisors unanimously approved a vote of no confidence in the sheriff and called for an investigation from the United States Department of Justice. Uh, Smith is currently due for court on January 12th to answer to all these allegations. If she disputes them, the case would be heard in front of a jury. If Smith admits to the accusations or later loses at trial, she will likely face removal from office. Even more so, I would expect that maybe she will be removed before then or will step down because this is just a really bad look for her and her office because they were clearly engaging in very clear corruption in violation of Second Amendment rights. Many gun control organizations talk about how great May issue schemes are, but this is the reality of how May issue schemes actually operate. It gives broad discretion and often unchecked discretion to one single person. We should never be granting a single person discretion over whether someone else can exercise a constitutionally protected right. This type of corruption and pay to play scheme is being addressed currently by the Supreme Court in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association v. Bruin case. There, the state of New York's proper cause standard of issuing permits results in only those individuals who are VIPs, elites also, in getting their permits. So pretty much in the state of New York, there's a similar scheme to where this proper cause pretty much only results to these high up individuals or maybe even people who are bribing to be issued their permits. So hopefully the Supreme Court does the right thing and strikes down these may issue schemes and stops states like California and New York who are engaging in very clear corruption in relation to may issue uh, CCW permits. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I'll try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm or fuel Al Gore's rhythm. It adds fuel to his jet and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. So thank you so much to everybody who's liked, commented, subscribed, who's hit that notification bell. You guys are directly impacting these uh, videos, impacting this channel and really helping me to reach more people than I could have ever thought. So thank you so much for all of your support. If you're a new subscriber or a longtime lurker and you just recently subscribed, uh, go ahead and comment down below if you're a new subscriber and I'll make sure I comment back to you. And if you don't have a comment in mind, just comment down below that you're coming to feel the algorithm and that really does help these videos. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget to share this with Built Barm Scholars and stay maintain Barm Scholars.